Okay, just a quick update on RetroPie. I've been using this for two or three years maybe now, and the latest release came out in about November 2016, which was 4.1, and since then there have been many, many, many updates um, sort of committed to the project, um, probably in the hundreds. But there's a soon to be a new release, 4.1.20, I think, that includes all of those ready for distribution again but you don't have to wait for a new image release you can always just do the manual updates yourself you just go into the retropy script update the script update the binaries if you want and you get the new version whenever you like so it's not um, a case of waiting for it but it's always good to see sort of a new image released for everyone to check out now bear in mind you don't have to update at all if you don't want to a game that you're emulating in say 2015 on the Mega Drive, if you play that game in 2017 on a Mega Drive emulator, it's likely to be ex well, pretty much exactly the same experience. There's just lots of other things that tend to get updated. Um, maybe it's the emulator's interface or the options within that emulator. Um, and in terms of RetroPie, maybe it's just that the um, configuration scripts are working more efficiently or they give you more flexibility in what you want to do. But when you're actually playing the game, um, there doesn't tend to be a great difference. So obviously, if you do want to try this new image, completely back up what you've got, um, because any sort of upgrade always comes with that sort of caveat. You just want to make sure everything's going to be OK. Now, on the screen, I'm using um, an image that was released on the RetroPie site for a bit of testing. So it might change um, before it's released, but this has got most of the um, up-to-date well, updates in it. So if I run through a few that um, have been listed, quite a key one is that Emulation Station here has video support now because there's been a lot more work on it with a few guys on the RetroPie forums. You'll see that there's features to allow themes to support videos and um, other um, display options. Well, I think Marquee it would also display that. So if I go into Mega Drive, you can see, there we go, I've got Streets of Rage 2 and um, to be honest, there's probably I could probably do two or three complete videos on how to get video setup working in Emulation Station because from what I've seen, um, there's lots of different ways of sort of well deploying it, I suppose, or creating the metadata to show this as you want. Um, I just took a shortcut here, basically, I sort of crowbarred it in. The way I've done it isn't recommended, I wouldn't say to to do it on a large scale and um, yeah anyway that's for a separate video the point is emulation station can support videos as you can see and it looks really good I think it's definitely um, comparable to at least the way um, a track mode does it which um, has been doing it for some time and now a track mode is also in RetroPipe so that's a new feature as well it's in the experimental section but that's definitely worth checking out so whilst it's got the video support there and it can support you know hundreds of videos no problem at all it's also got a fix to get rid of the white screen of death issue that you might see on Emulation Station. I think that's typically generated when you have a stack load of systems um, on this screen. So here, where you've got maybe, I don't know, 20, 25 plus, um, there was a problem processing that and now that's fixed. So you can get as many systems as you want there now, really. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I'll definitely get into more detail on this um, section here. So one, just as a brief overview of what I did here, if I go down to UI settings, I installed a theme called Old Ring by, um, I forget the user on RetroPie forums now, but there's a few for, um, themes out there that will support the video element. And also if I go to press the start button and choose, no, if I press the select button and hit edit this game's metadata, you can see it's got a video and marquee option. Um, but there's quite a lot of detail now around the game list. I haven't, like I said, I haven't looked at this in a long time and a lot's kind of changed. Um, all for the better, um, particularly pass, config pass and location of um, metadata, game list files, images. Um, so yeah, I need to update a few videos maybe and um, do a new one covering certain areas. Anyway, that's that. Um, it's also got support now for Odroid C2. Um, I haven't got one of those boards, but um, RetroPie will run on that. Kodi 17 is now installable. Um, I don't tend to use Kodi on a RetroPie build, but if we go into the RetroPie setup, um, you'll see it in the optional packages. So if I go back here and RetroPie, 
and then this is a bit screwed up because of the way I'm using the theme at the minute so ignore the fact that it looks odd and um, yours won't actually let's flip it back if I go to UI settings and carbon okay that's how it should look right RetroPie setup Hmm, that's not going well. Okay, I've just restarted it. That's the first time I had that error. Um, like I said, it might have been what I was fiddling about with earlier. But let's give that another go. Um, we go to RetroPie and RetroPie Setup. Okay, now what we're going to do is check out in the uh, experimental section, I think. So we go Manage Packages. By default, this I know it says 4.1.19, but it's 4.1.20 basically, this, or at least the test one. Uh, manage packages and experimental. Now, one um, we'll check out in a minute drastic. So, we've got Nintendo DS emulation now, and that works. So, give that a quick go. Um, I installed that a minute ago. And down is it experimental Cody? Let me get the keyboard. There you go, you've got a track mode there, so you can automatically install that. There's not sort of the manual faff, if you like, um, to install it that there has been previously. So I'll probably do, um, I'll do a guide on installing a track mode through the RetroPie experimental menu and uh, tweaking that. But Kodi must be, uh, let's have a look, optional. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so code is installable there, that's Kodi 17. It's also got advanced name, which um, is, is where are we optional? Yeah, this should be it. So advanced name obviously is a um, uh, main uh, arcade emulator. And it's this one here. Now here it says down the bottom, advanced name 3.3, although the readme says it's 3.2. But either way, it's, it's updated. So if you like using advanced name for certain support on certain games, it's got an update there. Um, now, if I go back and play a game, which is rare on my videos, but I do play them now and again. Um, let's go Mega Drive. Go in here. And whilst I'm here, I just hit A, because this is the run command script, which is core to the whole RetroPie sort of script setup. That's also been updated. Um, I think it's described as uh, overhaul of the run command launch script, so it's been optimised, improved. And there's some great options down here, not least um, uh, launch with verbose login. So if you get any issues, if you launch with verbose login, it will effectively um, store a detailed log about any issues, which you could then post um, for others to see and, and help you out. So that's a really helpful um, option there. And I think the NetPlay um, from with RetroArch has been enhanced as well. So um, that's one of the improvements with the updated RetroArch version. So if I launch this, you can see that when I get into the game, if I hold down Select and X, I'm in RetroArch uh, Argui, and you can see it's 1.5 now. So you can see all the updates that RetroArch 1.5 brings on the uh, LibRetro website, and you can get a nice change log to see all the details. I think um, a few of the options relate around improved network support and... Um, uh, what the other things there's several things that are improved so check it out and you'll get um, oh there we go yeah netplay I think that's one and scan content there's probably quite a few things that I haven't seen or tested yet but um, it's good that RetroPie sort of keeps up to date with uh, the latest features on that so you can benefit from those as well okay so there's that um, RetroArch has been updated. Also, if you play N64, some of the names of the LibRetro cores are changing. So, um, Moop or LR Moop N64 Plus is now called LR Parallel N64, and the one that the core that used to be called Gloop N64 has been renamed to Moop N64 Plus, just to keep it consistent with um, with those cores. So, just be aware that the names have changed, basically. I don't tend to emulate much N64, but for those of you who do, do be aware of those um, updated names. 
Okay, also, if you install, rather than using the image, if you install RetroPie on a pre-existing Raspbian setup where you've got um, a UI, uh, like Pixel Desktop, or other sort of um, graphical front ends, I think there was an issue before opening that from Emulation Station, and that's been fixed, so it's a bug that's been um, sorted out. Uh, what else is there? Oh, there's a new Amiga emulator, so if I go to Amiga, now I, ins I installed this from the... Is either the experimental or the optional? I've forgotten now. Probably experimental. Um, to start Amiberry. Now I haven't run this, and I imagine I w might not be able to escape from it. So I'll give it a go anyway. So this is obviously it is a. Oh, it looks nice. I haven't used an Amiga emulator for ages. Um, okay. Yeah, it's wanting a mouse there, which is fair enough. Um, yeah, I'd give that a go. It's been getting some good reviews. I'm reading up about it, and um, certainly looks. Like it's got a lot of features. Um, I have to give that one a go. Okay. Oh wait, my cursor is working. So I forgot. Okay, so you can emulate like the A five hundred, A twelve hundred with the sixty eight, A twenty there. Change the speed, and there's probably an option for the kickstart workbench version. Oh, okay, twelve hundred built in. ROMs, RAM, floppy drives, hard disks, display. Sound input. Save states. Now, I don't know where you set which um, sort of the like the yeah the kicks. Oh, there you go. Okay, there's the pass. Yeah, no, that's good. Now, if I can work out how to quit. There we go. That was pretty responsive as well. It was very um, quick to react as soon as I was inputting there. So definitely one to watch. Uh, what else have we got? Okay, so the USB support has been updated. So as for ages, if you put your ROMs on a USB stick, and put it in, it would quite happily copy them across to the Pi or the SD card in the Pi to let you play those. Um, so you don't need a network connection to get files across to it. So that was really useful. But now there's also a really easy way to keep all of your ROMs on the USB stick so you don't even need to copy them across so you could have a much bigger maybe you've got a much bigger USB stick than the SD card or you just want it more portable and you you know put it into a different Pi you can keep all of your ROMs on the USB stick and um, auto sort of mount it if you like and the way to do that it's all detailed in the wiki or the document um, the documents that are listed on the site and you just create a folder called RetroPie-Mount. I think that's right. Let me double check that. Yeah, RetroPie-Mount on the USB uh, drive. And then it will then use that directory as everything from the RetroPie folder on the SD card up. So you can just maintain all your BIOS files and your ROMs um, on the USB card. So uh, USB stick. So that's pretty useful development as well. What else has it got? Um, Bop, 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 bop. Just looking down the list. Um, Raspbian Wheezy support removed. So I guess if you've already got Raspbian and it's the Wheezy um, version, if you try to write, install RetroPie on that, it's not going to work anymore. You, you have to get Raspbian uh, Jesse. But um, Jesse, that's been out for some time now, so that shouldn't be much of an issue. And then there's much, uh, well, there's about another 10 um, packages in the experimental section. So more emulators relating to arcade emulation, but also the DS emulator. So I've got that here. And the reason, oh, there we go, Nintendo DS. So if I go in here and run Mario Kart. There we go. And um, I think what it's doing, I mean, obviously the DS has got two screens, so it's just stuck the two screens together there. And straight away my d-pad is working quite happily to control this so I can choose single player Grand Prix okay and um, it's really quick I'm on a Pi 3 but it's uh, very responsive there okay here we go so yeah you can kind of see that line separating the top and bottom screen it's running pretty well. Well, on the top left, I guess that's maybe the percent of the original, how fast it should be running. So you can see it's running at full speed. I'm guessing that's what it is. Um, here, I've still got the pointer. Um, so I can accelerate. 
and hop back there and go backwards, but I can't go left and right because that just moves that. But that's probably just a config file I need to change for my controller. Um, I can pause, okay. But I don't know how to get don't know how to get rid of oh and select and start won't do anything because this isn't a um, isn't a libretto course so it's not you know using the defaults so I should be able to do something on my keyboard but tabs not doing anything whoa okay so there's buttons hang on. don't know how I did that oh Okay, so you can flip the screens, get a single screen. Oh, side by side. Hang on a minute, uh, if I go back. Nope. What was that? Oh, here we go. Um, something around the VBN area. Uh, can't go up and down now for some reason. Oh, keyboard works. Okay, hang on. Controls. Okay, so it's all here. D pad up. I don't, there's probably a button to flip between like that touch screen, the stylus, and the actual left and right. I'm not going to do it now, but there you go. It's great. It looks really good. Great emulator. Okay, um, yeah, so that is just quite a quick overview, and like I say, there's hundreds of other fixes that are on there. Check out the RetroPie forums for more details on any of those elements, but um, if you haven't had a look at RetroPie in a while, it's worth taking another look. There's um, loads of improvements and more emulators, uh, better configs, and generally just a really active um, project that's well worth getting involved with. Um, hope that helped. Cheers.